Professor Kiss here. I want to talk about the calculation of the duration gap. But before I do that, let's go through how we measure duration of a security in Excel. And then we'll look at measurement of the interest rate risk exposure of a bank or other financial institution. Now, duration is an additive function. That is that the duration of a portfolio of securities is the weighted average of the duration of the individual securities with the weights equaling the portion of the portfolio invested in each security. Now, just a couple other things to remind you about duration. When we have the maturity of a bond longer, we have a higher duration. When interest rates go up, though, the duration of a bond falls. The higher the coupon rate on the bond, the shorter is the duration. So we're going to measure something called the duration gap. And I should mention to you that when I worked at a couple of banks where I was on asset liability committee, we measured our interest rate risk exposure with the repricing gap, and then we went into the duration gap. Now, the duration gap is the duration of the assets minus K times the duration of the liabilities, where K is a measure of the bank's leverage, that is the amount of borrowed funds or liabilities rather than owner's equity that is used to fund its asset portfolio. So K is liabilities divided by assets. We will also see that in market value terms, if there is an interest rate shock, the change in the market value of equity is minus the duration gap times the asset size times the interest rate shock. And I'll be working through a problem to show you just that. So the formula shows there are three items that affect the changes in the financial institution's equity or net worth. The leverage adjusted duration gap, D sub A minus D sub L times K, the size of the bank, A assets, and the size of the interest rate shock, which is the change in interest rates divided by one plus the interest rate risk. So that is our interest rate shock. And the duration gap is measured in years. And it's reflecting the degree of mismatch in a bank's balance sheet. The larger the gap in absolute terms, no matter which one's larger, duration of assets or duration of liabilities, the more exposed the bank is to interest rate shocks. So here is my very simplistic example. We have a bank of 100 million in assets, 30 million in cash, 20 million in treasury notes, 50 million in loans. They are funded with 40 million in demand deposits, 50 million in time deposits, and 10 million in equity. So debt plus equity, liabilities plus equity is also 100 million. Now, what I'm going to do is to calculate the duration of the treasury notes, and I've put that on this slide, but I'll show you that in Excel. For everything else, I'm going to give you the duration. So the duration of cash is zero. The duration of loans is five years. Duration, remember, is expressed in years. The treasury note matures in two years, but you'll see the duration is a little bit less than two years. Then what we're, so the weights we have to calculate, well, that's the portion of the portfolio invested in each because duration is additive. With 30 million in cash and 100 million in total assets, the weight of cash is 30%. With 20 million in treasury notes and 100 million in total assets, the weight of the treasury notes is 20%. And with 50 million in loans and 100 million in assets, the weight is 50%. Now, 
we will multiply the weights of these times their duration and sum them. I'm going to show you with my calculation that the weight of the treasury note is approximately 1.9. Multiply that by 0.2 and that is going to be the weight times the duration is 0.38. Zero times anything is zero. Loans are half the portfolio. They have a duration of five years times 0.5 gives us a duration weighted duration of 2.5. I add zero plus 0.38 plus 2.5 to get 2.88 plus some more decimal places. Now let's look at the duration of the liabilities. We will assume that the duration of the demand deposits is zero. We could assume something else, but in our example, we are assuming it is zero. We're assuming that the duration of the time deposits is three years. Now, what are the weights? Well, remember, equity is not a liability. So if we have 10 million in equity, 100 minus 10 is 90 million in liabilities. So the weight of the demand deposits, 40 million, is 40 million divided not by 100, but by um, 90 or 0.444. And the weight of the time deposits is 50 divided by 90 or 0.555. Zero times anything is zero. Three times the weight 0.555 is 1.666667. Sum these numbers and we get the duration of the liabilities to be 1.66667. Now, let us go to the Excel to watch how we do that. So I'm going to do a new share and bring up the Excel. So I have the exact same numbers here. And let's just look at the math in the Excel. So what I am going to have to do is to calculate the duration of the Treasury's note portfolio. And I have done that in cell F25. So let's see, there's a couple things to do. So the first thing is that when we calculate a duration, we have a numerator and a denominator. The denominator for duration is the price of the security. The numerator for the duration is the price as the present value of each of these cash flows multiply by the time in years to get the cash flow. So remember, treasury notes have a semi-annual payment. So there will be four payments, even though it's only um, two years. So I have taken these periods in six-month periods. I have four six-month periods. Now, remember, I want to multiply by time in years. So I will multiply by one divided by two or one times 0.5, two times 0.5, three times 0.5, and four times 0.5. Here are our cash flows. This treasury security we said has a 6% annual coupon rate, 20 million face, 0.06% times 20 million times 0.5, works out to be 600,000. Those are the cash flows for three of the years, three of the periods. The end of the fourth period or the end of the second year, we will also get back the 20 million in principal. So the cash flow for that is 20,600,000. Now, as I said, we're gonna multiply each of these cash flows times time, times a half to get it in function. In other words, like times in a year. So this is a half a year to get 600,000. That's 300,000. A year to get 600,000 is 600,000. A year and a half to get 600,000 is 1.5 times three, is 0.5 times three times 600,000 or 900,000. And two years is multiplying 20,600,000 times four over two, which gives me two. And that gives me 41,200,000. Now, 
I could take the present value of each of these cash flows, and that's what I've done in column D and sum them up. That gives me my duration numerator. But there is a shortcut. Remember the net present value function is looking at the, val the value of a stream of cash flows beginning in period one. So we were using the NPV function with our interest rate of 3%. We are getting all of these in one function. We don't need to add each individually. Now we take our duration numerator, divide it by the price or the duration denominator, and that gives us our duration in years, 1.9143056. 7, 7, and there's many places that we want. Next, we calculate the duration of the assets. And I tell you that that is in E5, the duration of liabilities is in J5. So let's look at that. The duration of the assets is zero times zero, 0.2 times 1.914, and plus five times 0.5, the sum to 2.88286.1135. For the duration of the liabilities, remember it is zero times 0.444 plus three times 0.556 or 1.6667. So those are our answers here. Now, what is the duration gap? The duration gap is the duration of the assets minus K, and K here is equal to 90 over 100 or 0.9 times uh, the duration of the liabilities. In my example, that works out to be 1.382861135. Then the why are we doing this? Because if the relative change in all interest rates is some interest rate shock, in my example, 0.2 percent or 20 basis points, we want to get the change in the market value of equity according to the duration gap formula. I am, and that works out to be in my example when I work it through of point of my the asset size E5 times the 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 uh, weight of the the duration of the assets minus duration of the liabilities. And now we have here, we have the asset size, which is in B5, multiplied by E15, which is the duration gap times the shock of 0 0.002 or 20 basis points or 0.2%. That works out to be minus $276,572.20. in my example. So now you know how to calculate the duration of a security and the duration of a, the, a weighted average duration of the assets and a weighted average duration of the liabilities, put them together, get a duration gap. And if we have an interest rate shock, we can measure the change in the market value of the portfolio. And this is what I would have to be showing in class um, to, excuse me, at Asset Liability Committee to show our interest rate risk exposure. This last slide here is just talking about the economic interpretation of duration, and we express this linearly with modified duration. Thank you very much for your attention.